Hi everyone, we're back. Thanks for watching PTN, the Pocono Television Network. Before we talk to these fine people and tell you exactly where we are, quick shout out to Lisa at Kitchen Chemistry in Stroudsburg. Ugh, what a day we had there yesterday. She makes the absolute best, and I mean the best, baked goods in the Pocono Mounds. We just had a wonderful time. But right now we are in beautiful Milford. When you say beautiful, Milford exemplifies that word. It's just an incredible small town. You have to come and visit it, but we're gonna tell you why you have to come and visit it. And we got the right people standing right next to us. We have Sean Strube, who is the mayor. He also owns a great property here. And we have his sister with us, and his sister also has another visitor we're gonna tell you all about too. But I'm gonna turn it, out, turn it around to the folks who know. Sean, tell us some of the great things about Milford that we need to know. Sure, well Milford um, has an incredible history and in the 19th century it was like the Hamptons of its day. That's why all the famous people who were here at the time of the Civil War there were a thousand hotel rooms. So uh, we have this history, we have heritage attractions, Gray Towers National Historic Site, the birthplace of the American conservation movement. The people from all over the world come to see the blood-stained flag that cushioned President Lincoln's head which is at our County Historical Society Museum, the Columns. Uh, the water wheel, the upper mill complex, has an old 19th century wooden grist mill that works, and the water's going over, it goes clickety-clack. Uh, but in addition to those sort of heritage attractions in our history, uh, we have the gorgeous you know, natural setting and the river and the mountains, uh, but we also have a really vibrant uh, uh, cultural life in Milford. We have a year-round schedule of festivals. We have a, uh, the Black Bear Film Festival every October, uh, which I think this is the 19th year. We have Milford Music Festival in June and in September. We have the Readers and Writers Festival in September, the Festival of Wood at Gray Towers in August, uh, Winter Lights Festival in January. And part of these festivals are really reflective of a creative community here that you also see in the galleries and, uh, uh, and the, uh, the shops, the boutiques, and lots of artisanal things that are, that are made here. And I think what's newest in Milford is the emergence of a food scene here. You know, we are so close to many growers and purveyors and foragers and, uh, um, and a number of the restaurants, including ours here at the Hotel Faucher with 403 Broad and Bar Louis and the Delmonico Room uh, and others in the community have really been prioritizing using local farmers, locally produced goods. And that has brought a sort of younger, uh, foodie-oriented uh, uh, audience to, uh, to Milford. Uh, and of course, you know, one of the great things about Milford that is you know, enhanced or is we're so close to New York. We're only 90 minutes away from New York City. And, um, and so on weekends, you know, this area is just full, filled with, with, uh, with New Yorkers and others from Philadelphia and elsewhere uh, coming here to enjoy the, the history, to go hiking in the national park or tubing or canoeing or kayaking on the river uh, uh, and, uh, and enjoying our festivals and our, our cultural scene. And, and I, I think one of the, the neatest things here is you don't really expect the Civil War history. No. That, and, and also, too, the film industry history that we talked about a while back. T tell us about that. That's sure. the thing that fascinates me about that. Sure. Well, part of, you know, Milford actually, when it became settled in the early 19th century, it was mostly a French community. You know, the, um, uh, the French financed the American Revolution, right? They, they right. financed us. And, and to the, to the victor belong the spoils. So after the Revolutionary War, the, the Brits were sort of you know, on the outs and the, there was a lot of French businessmen uh, and, and, and commerce out of New York. And Milford became the place where they came in the summertime and they came to go hunting. So lots of the old family names here are French. Uh, Louis Faucher is Francophone Swiss. The Pinchot family, Grey Towers. Uh, and that helped sort of set the stage for Milford becoming a destination in the mid 19th century and during the Gilded Era. Louis Faucher was master chef at Delmonico's in New York, yeah. which was the most celebrated restaurant right. uh, in the country. And he brought that clientele from Delmonico's out here in the summertime. Uh, uh, and then in the uh, early 20th century, D.W. Griffith made a couple of his first films here in Milford. That's amazing. So there was a lot of early uh, film history here as well when the film industry was based in New York sure. before it went to, to, to Hollywood. So here at the hotel we've had, you know, Charlie Chaplin and uh, Mary Pickford and the Gish sisters and uh, uh, Lionel Barrymore, a whole range of, uh, you know, really famous film stars uh, who were here. The story of the 
Lincoln flag at the columns right. is interesting because uh, that was a family that moved to Milford after the Civil War, and they were, uh, they were in the theater business. And the night that President Lincoln was assassinated at Ford's Theater, there was a, a young actress named Jeannie Gourlay who was supposed to sing a song that was written especially for the president's attendance that evening. And some of her costumes there too. Well, right, and she used to wear a dress that was made just for that occasion. And of course the president was, was killed uh, and she didn't get to sing that song or wear that dress. Uh, but the family had some souvenirs from that evening, including the flag that had been hung as bunting in front of the presidential booth that when he was shot, they grabbed that to rest his head on it. And, um, uh, and they came to Milford and uh, uh, around 1910, she gave a long affidavit of what happened that night from the perspective of the actors on stage. Wow. And I think her, her brother was a stage manager and her father was the box office manager. Uh, and then ultimately they gave all these souvenirs to the Historical Society. So they don't have just the flag, they have a whole story and a collection of Lincoln Alia, including the dress that was never worn for the song that was never sung. Uh, and people from all over the world come to see this flag and this exhibit. It's pretty amazing. It is, and I know we've we've focused on that before in some of our Pocono Mountains magazine segments. But wanted to just I got to bring Megan in. Megan, you have a doggy there, don't you? Let like, talk talk to us about how pet friendly Milford is. There are hundreds of hiking trails in the area, and our hotel, the Hotel Faucher, is actually pet friendly, and we don't have a weight limit for dogs. And there's there's several restaurants with outdoor seating, so your dog can sit right next to you. But we also welcome dogs with house-made biscuits and water dishes and all that. So my dog loves to come here, and she was actually just thinking she wanted to go hiking yeah. right now. <laughs> well, and as mayor, I have to say it's important to pick up after your dog. Yes. We, we, we value keeping our sidewalks and streets clean. <laughs> And we've been so privileged to be here talking all about Milford, Pennsylvania in front of the beautiful Hotel Fouchier. It's an experience you'll never forget. But also, when you visit Milford, all the things around it just make it great. So, when you visit the Pocono Mountains, you got to add that to your trip. Or, hey, visit us again. Stay in all these counties where you'll find one of the best experiences you've ever had. I'm Chris Barrett for PTN, the Pocono Television Network. Thanks for watching.